What's up, fifth through eighth students? Um, we're back at it again. Back with at it again. Recalculating week two. Um, last week we talked about um, Joseph and how all the recalculations in his life were all according to God's plan. And man, Joseph saw that. He changed his perspective and he just saw that God was working through the good and the bad for his glory and for our good. This week we are going to be looking at the life of Jeremiah. And if I'm honest with you, when plans change, I have a hard time with it. Me like too, yeah. I, I oftentimes want to like just grit my teeth and just like get through it. But what we're talking about today and what we're going to see in the life of Jeremiah is that not only do we just need to like survive God's plan and just like get through it, we need to align with it. You need, we need to thrive within God's plan. And what that does is that helps us understand that the recalculations, the changes in our life happen all according to his will. And so Nathan's going to take us into the life of Jeremiah. See you soon. What's up, guys? Okay, so like Ethan was just saying, when plans change, our tendency is to just grit our teeth and like endure this tough time. And like change is tough. And I'm not saying that it's not tough. But what I want to highlight today is that sometimes rather than just enduring it, it's better to embrace it and embrace that God is in control, that he has everything working out for our good and his glory, um, just like we talked about last week. But I also want to point out how this happens in the book of Jeremiah. So for those of you that don't know my boy Maya, as I like to call him, uh, he's a prophet uh, during the Babylonian exile. So God's chosen people, the Israelites, um, get kicked out of Jerusalem, essentially. They get taken over by King Nebuchadnezzar, and they get sent to Babylonia, this land that's not familiar to them, um, and it's just like a wild time. Talk about tough and enduring, crazy changes of plans and all that stuff. But what's, what's really interesting is that Jeremiah, um, as he's talking with the Lord and praying to the Lord, the Lord tells Jeremiah to tell this to his people. He's like, hey, guys, I know that this is tough. I know that life is hard right now. Um, but instead of just like gritting your teeth and getting through it, um, embrace where you are right now. So start um, having kids, start building your family, start uh, building farms, like making farms, like seek the welfare of this city in Babylonia in your captivity when times are just, you know, seek the welfare. So seek things that are good. And he's like, and just be, be faithful that I, I'm going to restore you. I'm going to bring you back to Jerusalem, all these things. So um, I'm going to pull up my little Bible app here. If you don't have it, it's nice to download. Um, so he says, build houses, build families, build farms, take care of yourselves, seek the welfare of the city. And then he says this, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. Verse 11 of Jeremiah chapter 29, by the way, pretty famous verse, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Um, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. And this is arguably my favorite verse, verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will, I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. So he's telling these guys, stay faithful for you where you are right now. Present faithfulness is the way I like to think of it. And then holy ambition, like knowing that the Lord is going to bring something good and glorifying to him out of all of this. So Nate talked about embracing, not just enduring the challenge ahead of us. Now, when we think about this, the Israelites were faced with a tremendous challenge and they could complain. They could decide to rebel and God challenged them to embrace the opportunity that was in front of them. And that's, I think, the challenge for us. And the opportunity is not just to look at what we could complain about or what we could get mad about, but really to look at the situations in front of us when life changes and look for the opportunity. So when your parents come in and say, hey, you're moving, we're going to go to a new school, we could get mad, we could get angry or we can look for what God is doing in the situation. Maybe that's a question that you ask. Whenever life throws you a curveball and your life has to recalculate, uh, to stop and go, what God, what might God be asking of me today? I, um, you know, this last weekend wasn't feeling so hot and a friend of mine asked if I could help uh, someone with COVID uh, their house to mow their lawn. I didn't want to, it was hot or whatever. And 
I said, okay, this is an opportunity to get outside myself. And as uh, I went over there, I mowed the lawn and, and I was telling my wife afterwards going, embracing the opportunity in front of me, forgetting about how uncomfortable or how bad I felt and going and serving that person who was sick, it changed my thought process and I left the day feeling a whole lot better because I embraced the opportunity ahead of me. All right, so we're throwing these words around, endure and embrace. And if we're just enduring the recalculations that are thrown our way, um, not truly embracing God's love and God's plan, we're missing out on the peace and the joy that really comes from that relationship with Christ. See, God doesn't just endure his relationship with us. He embraces us as sons and daughters loves us. That's why he sent his son down here for us. Next week for recalculating, we're going to be looking at the life of Daniel. So you don't want to miss it. See you guys next week.